Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. I've, I've talked about this before on podcasts, but I feel it needs to be repeated again and again because it's holding many of us back from living fantastic lives, blocking us. We don't know what's going on, and it's trauma. And when you hear that word, instantly we think of a major event, a car accident, a fire, something like that. Yes, traumatic. But there's other traumas that you may have suffered in your life that you might not equate to something with that word trauma that's that's holding you back. So we're going to talk about big traumas, little traumas. They all have an impact on us. And I would even go as far to say that we all have suffered a trauma of some sort, whether you realize it or not. Uh, She is somebody that helps people heal from all of that energetically through many different modalities, and she's our professional of the year for that. Heather Lena is back on the program. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? (laughs) Very well. Very well. Um, The the trauma thing is real. It It is real. Yeah. Uh, I feel for people that don't understand it or block it out and say, that's not me, but would you agree that... It's all of us. All of us have dealt. Yes. All of us at some point will or have dealt with trauma. Okay. And I will, I would even go as far to say that at least probably 99% of us, maybe even a hundred, whether we believe it or not, have past life trauma as well. Right. And you kind of saw a, a version of mine a couple of weeks ago on the podcast when I was going through that issue that I had with that um, big trauma that I had, right, where I talked about last week, where it was really like back and had a lot of stuff. But in our day to day lives, we can suffer trauma. And the way I define trauma is, it is something that takes a piece of us. Okay. So Mm -hmm. anytime we suffer a trauma, whether it's I mean, and I'm, I keep hearing a bad boss at work. So we're just going to use that as an example today, right? So if we have a job where our boss is just horrible, right? We hate going in there. They're not nice to us. They're bullying us. That person is taking pieces of us away from us. And, we, and we're left with holes. So you're kind of left with gaping holes that these people have taken. And those gaping holes are where where the trauma comes in, right? Because we're missing a piece of ourselves. And I've talked about I've talked about cutting work and I've talked about replacing DNA. But really, anytime we suffer a trauma, something of ours has been taken. Something of ours has been damaged. Whether you know it's mm-hmm. our heart, whether it's our our self, whether it's whatever it is. And when we have pieces of ourselves taken and not return to us, we are not whole. And therefore, and it's scary when we're not whole, right? It's scary when we're not able to be ourselves, be who we really are, be who we're supposed to be. And we're and so that trauma puts us in a place where we're like, well, we're not supposed to be like this, I can't do this. And it sticks us, if that makes sense. And Trauma comes in, trauma comes in very many different ways. You may not even know that you have the trauma because it's so Mm -hmm. minor, Mm -hmm. but it's holding you back from something because you're missing a piece of you. (laughs) You're literally missing a piece from you. So when I go in and I work with people with trauma, we go in and actually cut them from that trauma and any undercurrents that may be with that. So I'll give you an example. So I'm driving back from Flagstaff on Wednesday. It's a 75 mile an hour trek, right? I had gone over there first thing in the morning, done what I needed to do, and I was on my way back. And I have been run off the road multiple times by 18 wheelers. It it just happens to me. And I have gotten to the point now to where I literally have had to work through the fear of driving by those things. (laughs) Because they create so much trauma because I've always, they're always doing this, right? Well, I'm coming back Wednesday and I've worked through a lot of this trauma that, and the fear, the fear of this. And sure enough, I'm driving down I-40 and this trucker is obviously paying attention to his phone 
and he swerves into the middle of my lane. And I literally am like holding on to the car as far left as I can without going into the median. I get by him and I am like, normally I'd have been like totally shaken and in tears and, you know, cussing and swearing. And this time I was like, okay, <laughs> because I've worked through the trauma of that. I've worked through through the whole issue of the fear of that and just know that it doesn't do me any good to become fearful. I just need to deal with the situation and then, you know, move on and hope like he doesn't kill anybody in the process. Right. Because if he's done it to me, he's going to do it to somebody else. But even something like that created a lot of trauma to the point to where I was fearful to almost drive, to almost wow. drive. And especially around 18 wheelers, because they just get, they just scared me so bad. And I've just, I've literally worked through that trauma. And now I just come up with a system of, I don't get, I don't ride beside them. I wait till there's clear. And then I just speed by them and just keep going. So I'm not stuck next to them. So if they swerve, I'm not stuck next to them. But that's an example of how even something as minor as something like that can create trauma mm. in your life. And fear, right? The undercurrent of fear in that. I I never thought of it in the way that it takes something away from you. So honestly, got to process that. I'm well, I'm right there on your page, but I never heard it presented that way. So now I'm thinking back to things that, and I'm sure we all are, that we may have experienced and how that translates. And th anything that's a trauma that comes back, that would be a trigger, right? Mm -hmm. So you got yes. triggered as you were driving back from Flagstaff, where the 18-wheeler, you've had situations there before. Um, to me, that's a very valid one. <laughs> you know, um, I never thought of the boss one, though. The, you know, your, your, your boss is just toxic, but I, I would think that's an ongoing situation. Somebody just doesn't turn one day and just is nasty, um, but never thought of that in terms of a trauma. But then there's also things that we may have gone through that we've buried. Yes. You know, the passing, uh, I'll be honest with you. My dad passed when I was 21. I think I've dealt with it. How do I really know? How do I know? How do I know that that's not sitting right there? <laughs> right? You know, those see me. We'll figure it out. But you're right, you know. Um, and so I have learned about, um, the, energetically, I've learned how to deal with things that cr would create trauma and deal with them immediately so they don't fester. Okay. Mm. So I'm having issues with, I'm having issues with animals <laughs> in the last 30 days. Um, we have, we have foster cats. They're feral cats that we've adopted and taken care of. And we had three keyword in that sentence was had. Um, and mm. two of the two, my two babies that I have in my house were the, um, daughter and son of one of those fosters and she was my special needs kitty okay she had cross-eyed so we called her cross and i got a call on um tuesday from the neighbor that helps keep an eye on them saying that she had been hit by a car and had been left um and that the neighbor couldn't get away and i got there and i was like holy crap right and so i was upset i dealt with the whole situation and then the first thing I did was I went home and I cut, I started cutting. So I start, I cut me from her. I cut me from the trauma. I cut me from everything. Right. And while I'm still sad that she's gone, I'm not a bubbling mess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because again, yeah. I dealt with that trauma because she had a piece of me. She had a piece of my heart that I needed to get back, <laughs> that I needed to get back from her and let her go. And that's part of it, too, is when we release trauma, especially trauma that's been caused by other people, okay, in order to really, really release it, you have to be cut from them and let them go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to, you have to release them. You have to let them, you have to let them go. You have to let it go. And energetically it's hard to do that and i cut people from other people all the time when i left the arizona department of corrections we did cuts on on people that i worked with we did cuts on the agency we did cuts on the facility we did cuts on i you know we worked on former bosses that were just nightmares for me 
we cut all of that and I took all of this, all of me that they had taken back into me. And now I look at the place and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go back there. But I was attached to that place and had, even though I'd suffered trauma from that place, I was addicted to it, right? And so it was like that trauma kept drawing me back into it. It was like, oh, I can make this better. I can make this better. I can do this. Instead of saying, I don't need this trauma in my life. It, Does it's that amazing make sense? how we're still connected. And I, for everybody to understand, or some of us, if, if you've never heard of it before, cutting. So you're referring to cutting energetic cords, right? Correct. And this, this is all about energy here. So it's understood that when we have cords everywhere. If, if you could see them, you wouldn't be able to see. There's so many different cords to, connected to people in your past. and But some of them impact your life and you need to cut the cord energetically so you can release it and it's not attached to you anymore. Uh, do you feel that the, the, the energetic cords that remain on us is the main issue here? I think it's part of the issue of, of uh, blah, you start over. I think it's part of the issue that's creating and accentuating the trauma that is stopping us from moving forward. Okay. So the cords are a portion of it, but the beliefs surrounding the trauma are also a portion of it. So if I were to take my truck example, right? So the belief system that trucks want to kill me was a belief system that I had to clear, okay? Um, that I needed to be fearful of them and that, you know, they, and so that was all belief work that had to be removed and downloaded with the knowledge that, if it's not my time to go, then I'm not going to go. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I, if, and so, but fear, but the fear of it, the fear of it underlies it and creates a bigger issue, right? So you've got the trauma and then you've got the fear, the anxiety, the depression, everything that's underlying or an undercurrent of that, of that trauma, along with whatever the belief system is that's created. So if you have the belief system that you are, that you have bad luck, we'll just throw that out there, right? So you have the belief system that I have bad luck. Click on delete that. Your, that belief system and that trauma is going to cause you to work at having bad luck because that's what your belief system is. You may be energetically connected to bad luck and we would cut you from that energetically, that cord. But the belief system is there that you have bad luck, that only negative things happen to you. And so we need to go in and release all of that and download you with the knowledge that you don't have bad luck, that you have good luck, that fortune comes to you, that you are able to manifest what you want, that the universe is not against you, right? Because how many times do you hear people say, God is against me, Claire Kessley, that, or the universe hates me, clear, cancel, delete that. Um, you know, none of that is true, but it's all beliefs that they're holding on to from something that has occurred that is taking a piece of them and is making them feel that way. Hmm. And so because of that, the trauma just accentuates that. So cutting the cords is a portion of it. Then working on what those beliefs are, what the root belief is, so that we can release that and clear that is the other portion of that. I have a connection um, that I, I, somebody I met recently in a group that I'm in and had a similar conversation just the other day. And I'll keep it very short. He wants to hold an event uh, for his line of business. And he's actually aligned with a company where he's paid you know, a few thousand dollars to have the rights to use the material for the event. So we're all, a bunch of us are all together and like, hey, did you, you, you get the venue? You set it all up? No. Well, you only have, you know, another month and a half. You got to get going on this. Uh, I know. I don't know. I, I just can't. I don't know what it is. I'm stuck. And then we dug into it and we tried to figure it out. And it, is he afraid to succeed? Because he could potentially make a very big mark doing this or is he afraid to fail he's not sure he's just not sure and he also wonders if 
in terms of his salary, that this is what he's supposed to always make and that's it. And, that, and I believe that's part of his belief, but there is something holding him back. And me and four other men tried to figure out what it was, asking him questions, imposter syndrome, maybe you feel you can't do it. He goes, no, that's not, no, that's not it. I know it's not. I have an ego. I'm good. For somebody like that or somebody in a, a situation, even in, even in abundance, making money where you just, you don't make more than you, you think you're capable of, when you work with somebody can you potentially figure out what that belief is that's holding yes. somebody back? Yes, wow. absolutely. Absolutely. And what happens is we go in and we, I just start asking questions, right? So, you know, um, and I'll use me, I'll use me as the example. So where trauma and past life comes in actually. So I have an extensive past life history and one of the things I was, was a pirate slash Viking. Okay. And I struggle with money. I struggle with now all day long. I can, I can find sales and I can get stuff, you know, on clearance. I, I can find stuff half off. I, I'm great at manifesting that, but just having money come into me, I, it's a struggle for me and it has been. And so in one of my sessions, I was like, I have got, what is, what is this? Cause we've been digging on it. Well, if you are a Viking or AKA pirate, right? What is you, what do you do as a, as a pirate? Okay. Most people know it as a pirate. You go in and you steal from people, you hide your wealth, right? Mm. Blah, 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 blah. And what do people do if they find you and your wealth? They kill you. Okay. <laughs> So they're driving the, an 18 wheeler, by the way. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Disregard. Yeah. Yep. So the root, one of the root beliefs that I work, that I need to continue to work on, we did some work on is money is death. Okay. Mm. Which was a huge trauma for me because obviously I was killed for money. Right. And, and, you know, I had to hide it. So I'm really bad about wanting to get rid of my money as soon as I have it, just spending it, you know, and, what do you do as a pirate? You have to hide it. You have to get rid of it. You have to move it. You have to put it into other things, right? All of that is trauma that is coming out that is affecting me now as the person that I am now that I'm having to work through. So that's an extreme example of what your friend could be going through. Mm. But, um, and it could be, you know, I've got a friend who, who has a lack at, she has, she, she runs off the belief that she she's motivated by the lack of things. So she if she's lacking, that gives her the motivation, right? <clears throat> and so, excuse me. So she has to be in a world of hurt in order for her to to work in the state of lack. And then she can start manifesting stuff in. So those are just two examples of what could be a portion of what that issue is hmm. and again if we had to go in and we had to cut me from that life from the cords from that life and then we had to work through those belief systems that surround all that you know yeah i never so it, I, you know <laughs> know about past life um never considered it i'm not saying it doesn't exist at all it's just i haven't processed that more deeply um, right but if that's floating out there this it's you wouldn't even know what it is. You wouldn't even oh. like, I can go back and I can, I can look at my childhood, check some boxes. All right. That's why you used to act that way until you figured it out. Oh, there's that one. There's that one. Oh, of course that makes perfect sense. And I've connected mm -hmm. the dots past life. How would you know, unless somebody worked with you to, to connect. Right. Hmm. Right. Wow. Is it a past and, and life it, regression that you do? No, I just go in. For me, I don't do real past life um, regression, right? So what will happen is, is I'll start talking to somebody and I either start getting flashes of visuals or I start getting like messages wow. um, of like words, right? So, or things. And so... What happens is, is I'll go in and I'll go up to the plane that I work off of, which is the seventh plane. And I'll say, I, I ask to be taken back and shown any and all events that would be causing 
this issue. And, um, and I even do it for myself. So I go back and I'm like, okay, creator, show me what all past life is causing, what, what's causing all of this. And I start getting visuals of like movies played of different events that I'm involved in or that the client is involved in um, that is causing them to have this issue. Wow. Um, and it could be part of it was triggered because of something that happened in this existence. It could be something new that's just happened and we don't even have past life. Um, you know, it could be sometimes, and honestly, sometimes trauma is, is carried down by family generational trauma. Yeah. You know, we get stuck in things with generational stuff that we don't even have a say in and it just gets there. I do a lot of work with generational trauma a lot of work with people that have generational trauma. And, and really, honestly, uh, many times when I have a client who is having issues with their family or their relationships, the first thing I do is I go back and see if they've had any past life issues with this soul that they're dealing with so that if they do, I can clear that as well. Now, do you mean two people – could have existed in a previous life. Oh yeah. Connected together. Oh yeah. All the time. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> like what are the chances of that? That, you know, it's not, a- nothing is coincidence. Nothing so, is, nothing is coincidence. Are you saying that, you know, you have two people, whatever relationship it is, it doesn't really matter in a past life. They were connected somehow. Now in this life, they are, reconnected again do you think they normally found each other for a reason yes normally it's to clear karma to clear up karma that's been created or a contract that's been created crazy in a past life it is it's when you really start getting into it it's pretty extensive <laughs> it's cool. um it's- but i live it i live this on a daily basis i i i personally live this on a daily basis so um i had an incident with a building and a neighbor at my building downtown, I had an inch incident with a neighbor. And when I went in, when I went in to have it worked on, cause I was mad. Um, the first thing my healer said was, yeah, you have a past life issue with this guy. Let's go ahead and clear that. <laughs> wow. I guess so, it, it comes back to the whole, the, I feel like I've been here before. Like I, you know, you know, that person or it, and with it, whether you, you know, you connect with them, you like them or not, whatever it might be. There's a familiarity with it that you can't put your finger up. Well, I never thought we were going to go to past life today. Um, amazing. But it, it connects with trauma. So it, it absolutely connects. For sure. It absolutely connects with trauma, right? Mm-hmm. Because as I, work, as I work through my own past life issues with these people, it releases trauma that I've had, that I've carried forward. Because remember – Unless you've got a healer or someone doing the work for you down here. So if I were to die, right, and I had, say I had karma with you for some reason, okay, Um, unless somebody goes in and finalizes that and clears that, in order for me to clear that with you, I've got to come back down at the same time you are and work on clearing that karma in this world, not you can't do it in the in, across the veil, so it has to be done in this in this world. So, I actually, when I do work on trauma with clients, many times I have um, spirits, lo- loved ones that have have passed over that come to the session with that person, especially if it's generational stuff. And I work on that person at the same time that I work on the person that's sitting in front of me. Um, and hmm. that clears. So, and, and many times it's either, I'll be honest, more times than not, it's a mom and daughter or a granddaughter and grandma that I'm working on some kind of generational trauma. I do, but again, most of my clients are women. I do work on anyone, right? I help anyone. But it's normally like a mom or a grandma that comes with them and is like, we need this. And there, I've, got, I've had a couple of them like, we need this cleared now. <laughs> and I'm like, 
okay, <laughs> I'm working on it. Give me a minute. <laughs> We're out of time, but I, I look at that and I, I see, and I, I think of um, uh, daughters, mothers, grandmothers in my circles, people I know and whatever conflicts they may have. And I think it's just, man, they just don't get along. You know, um, you know, there's more to it. Uh, mm, I can see your face and uh, that confirms it. Uh, wow. Uh, Heather, how do we connect with you? By the way, all of this, everything we're talking about, the energy clearing, cutting cords, all of that can be done virtually anywhere on the planet. Yes. That's the super cool part. It's energy. Um, how do we connect? So you can connect with me um, on Facebook at Healings with Heather, Instagram, same thing, Healings with Heather. Uh, my website, contact at heatherlena.com and sessions can be done in person or virtual. I'd love to help you heal yourself. Love the insight. Love the, this is the answer to everything. It really is what we're dealing with, what we're afraid to deal with. It all comes from traumas and, uh, and our past. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. I'll see you next week. I'm going to hit the road in a moment. And I'm, I'm not kidding. And every time I see an 18 wheeler, I'm going to be thinking of you. <laughs> not even kidding. Thinking positive thoughts. I'll talk positive to you soon. Positive thoughts. Yes. All right. We'll catch up next week. We'll be Bye. right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.